Now on Denver 7 News at 6, what's in a name? Activists say Mount Evans needs to leave its painful namesake behind. Broncos fans and the national media may be calling to hack, hack it, but right now the head coach isn't going anywhere. We're here for the whole long haul this season. The changes he wants to see before the Broncos are back in primetime on Monday. And make way for Lord Stanley. The oldest trophy in sports is coming to Denver 7 ahead of a big celebration tomorrow night for the Avs' big win. Oh yeah. So oh, yeah. Way. There you go. It's going to be here after traveling around the world. <laughs> oh, it'd be so cool. Yeah. Ice cream eaten out of it. Are they going to let us drink out of it? No. Some coffee or something? I'm not even sure how long we can look at it. Oh, okay. We're, yeah. we're, we're, They're we're keeping not it that worthy. Far yeah. away from us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nicole especially, if you heard yesterday, oh, yeah, when the, the, the water the bottle went Oh yeah, yeah right. It's Brian. No. He knocked it over. Yeah. It's true. Sorry. Be <laughs> accurate here, Lisa. Okay. Oh. Well, yeah, we're looking ahead to, to hockey season, and uh, we have some beautiful fall weather today, Lisa. I think Bernie's going to help me do the forecast here in a little oh, bit, too. Nice. Yeah, right? Uh, Mid-50s here early this morning. Uh, you can see a beautiful, very bright moon set right now uh, here in town. It's going to be a gorgeous start to the day. As you get out the door, mid-60s by about 10 o'clock. We'll be in the mid to even upper 70s this afternoon, so it will be a warm one. 60s and a few upper 50s for the mountains today. Denver 76, Keensburg 77, upper 70s near Fort Collins and Greeley. We will see an increase in cloud cover though today and a chance for a few. It looks like showers tonight, but as the winds kick up today, unfortunately, fire danger is going to be high over the northeastern corner of the state, so we'll see some gustier conditions. Winds upwards of around 30 to about 35 miles per hour. Coming up, we'll show you that chance for a little bit of rain, the timing of that this afternoon and what to expect for the rest of the week on our Super 7 day. Here on Highway 36 going between Fed Federal and Sheridan right up to the 80th Avenue Bridge as you make your way down the hill a bit. There is a medical call is what they said it was on that westbound side. So between 80th Avenue and Sheridan, take a look from the camera over there and you can see that that right lane is blocked up. There's activity on the right shoulder as well. Uh, it has all the signs of a crash in there because there's a couple vehicles, but they're saying it's still just a medical call in there. But with that right lane blocked, it is backing up traffic slightly by an extra minute or so. You can't even really tell on the drive times right now heading through there from Federal to Sheridan, not even seeing any significant delays up there right now. The rest of the drive continues just to build up in those usual spots. All the overnight construction we had over here to the east side, central Denver, as well as the west side is all cleared up. South side of town doesn't look too bad for us and 225 also moving along fairly well. Thank you, Jason. Well, it is one of Colorado's most well-known and most visible mm -hmm. 14ers, especially up and down the front range. But Mount Evans could soon have a new name. The proposal is going before a state board today, and Denver 7's Brandon Richard joins us live now. Brandon, native tribes in our state say the current name is a reminder of a horrifying chapter in our state's history. Absolutely, Nicole, and the Shine Arapaho tribes and others have been pushing for this name change for years, but changing the name of any landmark is not easy. It's a long process. Well, tonight marks an important milestone in that process. For the very first time, the Colorado Geographic Naming Advisory Board will hear the proposal from tribal representatives seeking this name change. Now, Mount Evans is named after Colorado Territorial Governor John Evans. John Evans authorized and was responsible for the Sand Creek Massacre of 1864, one of the worst massacres in American history. It resulted in the death of hundreds of men, women, and children from the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes. The Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes say someone like Evans should not be honored. We want the mountain changed because when we come to Denver, we don't want to look and see Evans. You know, there's a lot of things that we're, that we're changing, you know, in the country now as far as, as you might say, derogatory names or bad names. And so this would be a good, good name to change. And the Misdahet Coalition, which is made up of tribal members and the Wilderness Society, are pushing to rename Mount Evans to Mount Blue Sky. Blue Sky honors the Arapaho people who were known as the Blue Sky people, and the Cheyenne hold an annual ceremony of renewal of life called Blue Sky. Now, tonight's meeting starts at 6. Back in March, Clear Creek commissioners approved the name change, but as we said, this is a long process. The governor, as well as federal officials, must also sign off. Reporting in Denver this morning, Brandon Richard.
Denver 7. Yeah, seems long overdue though. All right, thank you, Brandon. This is part of a process to rename dozens of our state's mountains and waterways long considered offensive or controversial or both. Other mountains that could see a name change include Kit Carson Mountain, Pikes Peak, and the Gore Range. Mm -hmm. We're learning more about what led up to a Denver driver plowing into a crowd of people outside a bar in Golden, killing one of them. Three of the victims are still in the hospital this morning. According to court documents, there were some conversations between some of the victims and suspects about gang affiliations at the bar that night. And later, there was a fight in the parking lot. This was early Sunday morning at the Rock Rest Lodge. Jeffco deputies say they have not confirmed that this is a gang motivated crime. They also said they don't believe the suspects knew any of the victims personally. Denver 7 CB Cotton spoke with Mike Fulcomer. His son, Robert, was one of the seven people injured. All he remembers is the fact that he was standing um, and he took one step to one side, he said, and that's when he was hit. Yeah, we posted more information from the court documents on Denver7.com. This is the outcome we hoped for. We told you yesterday morning about a missing Boulder teenager. She was found safe in a Thornton home. Deputies still don't know why 14 year old Chloe Campbell was there or where she's been since September 30th. Her disappearance raised alarms though because friends said they last saw her with two older men leaving a high school football game. She was brought to a hospital for an evaluation. This morning, U.S. officials are condemning Russian missile strikes in Ukraine. Russia launched more than 80 missiles, killing at least 19 civilians and wounding more than 100 others. It is one of Moscow's largest attacks in months now. Today, President Biden will meet virtually with members of the G7. A senior official tells ABC News the group is expected to discuss ways to further aid Ukraine and continue punishing Russia. Officials at DIA and the Colorado Springs Airport say their websites were targeted by cyber attacks. A pro-Russia hacker is behind it. If you're flying out today and worried about your flight or airport information, security officials remind us that while these attacks can be inconvenient for employees and customers, they tend to last only a short amount of time and they aren't thought to be dangerous. Less than a month out from the midterm elections, Colorado's Secretary of State's office says it mistakenly sent postcards to about 30,000 people who are not citizens, encouraging them to register to vote. A database glitch is reportedly to blame. The Secretary of State's office said anyone who isn't a citizen and tries to register to vote won't be able to. One of the biggest races in the upcoming election for Senate is getting national attention. Republican candidate Joe O'Day is getting support from the Senate Leadership Fund, which is a super PAC aligned with Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. It has spent over a million dollars to help O'Day unseat Democrat Michael Bennett. That's still less than what the group has spent to help Republican candidates in other states like Pennsylvania and Georgia. Well, we know it's been tough for <laughs> Broncos head coach Nathaniel Hackett. Yeah. Probably uh, the b best nickname in sports right now, Hatchet. Yeah, best or worst. worst yeah, yeah, worst depending nickname. Depending on how you look yeah, at it, yeah. A creative one. Uh, he still has the job, though. He does. We, we still have hope, yeah. He has time turn to, around. to yeah. turn it around. Yeah, because the Panthers, because uh, this is how it could go, the Panthers' Matt Rule became hmm. the first NFL head coach to get the ax. Hackett's odds of sticking around aren't hmm. great. Uh, his odds to be the next head coach fired are plus 200 on sportsline.com. Hackett says he's not thinking about what people are saying. He's just worried about the hard work it will take to get back in the win column against the Chargers. Hmm. Fact of it is we're going to work and we're going to do what we have to do to be able to put the guys in the right position and find the right things to get these guys going and put them in better positions to be open and uh, better positions in the run game. I mean, that's what we want to do. I mean, we're here for the whole long haul this season. We've got 11 games. There's a lot more, 11, 12 games left. Uh, there's a lot left and a lot of room for improvement, and that's what we're going to be focusing on. Each week that yeah. the Broncos will break out. You've got to right? give they, someone a little time. Kind of I mean, been on the I don't cusp know. there. The Broncos are back in prime time for Monday Night Football. You can watch them take on the Chargers in L.A. Uh, right here on Denver 7. Our pregame coverage starts at 5 p.m. Hmm. Well, from one troubled Colorado sports team to another, the owner of the Rockies isn't hiding his disappointment, not mincing words this morning. In a letter to season ticket holders, Dick Monfort declared the four-year playoff drought for the Rockies not acceptable and says excuses serve no purpose. 
This season, the Rockies finished at the bottom of the NL West standings for the first time in seven years. 43 games out of first place. Montford says the team is committed to improving in the offseason and highlighted some of the team's young prospects. Opening day will still be a party, Lisa. I was going to say, that Rockies dog still tastes pretty darn good, I'll tell you what. Take a look at your bus stop forecast here this morning. 40s to near 50 here at the bus stop early on. Lots of sunshine will be in the low to mid 70s by the time your kids get home. There will be some building cloud cover. Chance for a few showers tonight. We'll time that out coming up in just a few minutes and the winds are going to kick up. I'll have more details in a few minutes. And right now we have still some building traffic in some of those usual spots. You can see some of those heavier areas here across some of the freeways. We had that one medical call on Highway 36 before Sheridan. That's way over to the side and now all lanes are open, whether it's 270, I-76 or getting down to the Denver Tech Center. Just seeing that slower traffic for you here this morning. The Supreme Court could decide the price you'll pay to bring home the bacon, uh, literally the bacon and the sausage. The case justices will hear today and protecting your data online, how you can weigh in on stronger requirements for companies. And imagine seeing this on your morning commute. Uh, recognize that snack <laughs> where you can find a statue dedicated to the cheesy fingers from Cheetos.